art holy, you art worthy, you art righteous, you art glorious. We give you praise and glory, the great and mighty God, the one that no one and nothing can be likened unto. The God that is incomparable, the one that nothing can be compared, nothing can be likened unto you. It is you that we praise tonight. It is you that we just worship. It is you that we exalt. Father, tonight, it's all about you, Lord. We are here because of you. We are here to learn at your feet. So, Lord, we enthrone you as Lord over everything we're going to do here this evening, over every word that we're going to speak, over everything that we're going to say. Lord, we pray that you have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are here to learn from you. We pray that you will speak expressly to us on this very important subject. Father, we pray that your word will come true for someone tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. But I will lift our voices and when we we pray to you tonight, we pray, Lord, speak and we will obey. Speak for our hearts listening it in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, we give you the center stage. Holy Spirit, I hand it over to you. I, I humble myself. I have no word of my own to give to anyone. But I'm sitting down here depending on you to speak your mind and to speak your counsel to someone listening tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I do not only give you the center stage, I give you the whole stage. Take absolute preeminence. Father, take absolute preeminence and let your name be glorified tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that you open up our eyes that we will behold wondrous things out of your word tonight. I pray that you give us our hearts that we receive your word tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. That which we do not know, Lord, teach us, open our eyes to receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory and honor and praise. Blessed be your name, great God, for in Jesus' mighty, precious name we have prayed and worshiped. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Good evening, dear friends, and welcome to today's episode of The Journey to Marriage. I hope you are being blessed by that song, by Sinach, Great Are You, Lord. Indeed, our God is great and greatly to be praised. There is none that we can even compare or liken unto Him. He's a great God and He deserves all of our praises. Hello again and welcome. If you're joining us for the very first time, a very big welcome to you. And for the benefit of those people that are just joining us for the first time today, I'd like to say just a few things about the journey to marriage. You know, with the journey to marriage, we've simply been looking at singles' preparation towards marriage because marriage is not something that you just jump into. It's something that you prepare into, it's something that you pray yourself into. It's not jump in and jump out it is something that you take your time prepare yourself and get in so in a nutshell we've simply been looking at those things that singles need to know we are just looking at the basic fundamental requirements to a successful and a lasting marriage so we've done a lot of videos in the past to the glory and praise of the Almighty God that have been a blessing to a lot of people that have inspired, that have encouraged, that have uplifted, that have instructed, that have guided people. And if you've missed any of those videos, I kindly request you to check on the Facebook page, The Journey to Marriage, on our, the, on our YouTube page. We also have a YouTube account, Glory to God, The Journey to Marriage. You're going to find all these videos there. Trust me when I tell you, it's going to bless you, it's going to encourage you, it's going to uplift you, it's going to inspire you because I know that God will speak to you through those videos. So get a hold on them and be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. So today, well, for those of you that don't know, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Ense Samuel Kasali. By the grace of God, I'm married, happily married. God has been helping us. And uh, I have two kids. And um, I guess that's all to know about me. Praise the Lord. So today, we're looking at a very important topic. Does God choose who you marry? It's, it's, it's a topic that, you know, it's very important, it's very crucial that we know if God really chooses what we, who we marry, what role does God play in who we get married to? What role do we play as individuals in our choice of who we get married to? Because sometimes we hear people say, I am trusting God to give me a wife or a husband. I am trusting God to tell me who to marry. I'm trusting God to do 
this or that regarding who I get married to. But we want to look at it from the word of God and from examples in the word of God. Does God, is it really the God have the whole responsibility of choosing who we get married to from the start to the end? Or do we have a part in it? Do we have a role to play? What role do we play? What role does God play so that we don't depend on God to do the things that we should be doing as individuals? So we're looking at a very interesting topic. Before we just jump into this topic, I'd like to pause right now and kindly request you to please share this video right now invite someone to join and watch even if they are married you know the you know one thing i've come to understand is that sometimes information we get is not really is not even for us it may be for someone maybe you are a mom your your daughter your son is gonna get married soon they're gonna be confronted with this question and they may ask you and you will need to provide them answers so it will benefit you you may have someone in your family that is not yet married and all of that they may come to you and ask you so invite everyone and anyone to join us right now and let God teach all of us together let's all learn together from the Word of God God bless you as you do that in the mighty name of Jesus so does God choose who we get married to before we jump in I think that is important that we just look back at the first marriage ceremony first first wedding that ever took place in the history of the world in the history of the universe and that's the marriage between Adam and Eve is very important that we draw clues from what happened what did God do how did it happen and then we see other examples throughout you know the, the, the truth in the word of God many other people that got married how did they do it and right now how are we supposed to be doing it so if we quickly have our Bibles we can look at Genesis 2 we are looking from verse 18 we'll read 18 and then we'll read 21 through 25 i'm just gonna take my time to to read this today so genesis 2 and verse 8, 18 after god has created everything created all the wonderful universe the plants the animals looked at everything and it was so good god was so pleased with himself that he took a rest God saw that it was not yet okay something was missing so God made man because God needed someone to tend to what he has created God needed someone to name the animals to name the plants God God carved out somewhere and he made, he made a garden of Eden in the, in the big universe he created he carved a place and he called it Eden he planted everything and he made man and he dropped man in that garden to take care of that garden to tend to the garden and man was going about his business and all of that and God and God looked at man going about his business. He said, Let's start from 15. 15 said, The Lord God placed man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. And the Lord warned him, You shall freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For if you eat its fruit, you will surely die. I'm reading from New Living Translation. And verse 18, where we are coming to say, then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. It was God saying this. God looked at man all alone in the garden and God said, oh my, it's not good for this man to be alone. Every animal I created, everything came in twos and he's just alone. So God saw that it was not good for him to be alone and God said, I will make him, I will make him a helper that is comparable to him. Because the animals, the, the, all of that, they were not comparable to him. So God said, I will make him a helpmate that is comparable to him. So the Lord, the Lord formed animals and everything from, from the earth. And we quickly jump to, you know, verse 22 and 21 from 21. The Bible says that the Lord caused man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord took out of it the man's rib took one out of the man's rib and closed up the opening then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man please let's take note of this he made the woman and he brought her to the man and when he brought her to the man what happened the man exclaimed oh this is the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken from man so from this account, we see that God made the woman and God brought the woman to the man. You will notice that God didn't tell the man, this is your wife. 
God didn't, you know, tell him, hey, Adam, I brought you a wife. God just brought her, like, paraded her in front of him. And the man looked and said, wow. It was the man talking and not God. He said, wow, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. So what do we get from this place that we read from this first marriage ceremony? God was interested in the man not being alone. God saw him that he was lonely and all alone. So God took interest in him not being alone and decided to make him some helper, some help meet that is comparable to him. God took from him a rib and God made the woman. And after God made the woman, God himself brought the woman, paraded him in front of the man. And when the man saw the woman, it was the man that named her woman. God didn't even give her a name or anything. He just created her. It was the man that named her. It was the man that claimed her. He simply claimed her when he said, she is born of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And please, let's bear in mind that when God created the, man, the woman, it made the man to go into a deep sleep. So the man did not know whatever God did. He didn't know that God took him from him or anything, of, or anything like that. But when he saw her, something of this world when he saw her he just knew that this one is mine this one is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh you and you also notice that God was silent all through when this was going on notice some things from this what we are what we are learning God made the woman God was interested in the man not being alone God made her God brought her to him God paraded her in front of him and just brought a beautiful looking curvy creature and the man went in love and named her and claimed her and all of that. So that was how the first ever marriage, selecting who, picking who to marry, that was how we started in the Garden of Eden. Now we, we, we can ask, so after the Garden of Eden, what happened? Was that the process that was followed? Was Did God keep, you know, creating and bringing women and parading, parading them before men? No, that did not really happen. When we go through the Bible after the Garden of Eden, we see that so many people got married to who they wanted to get married to, except the man Uzziah, maybe yes, that God specifically asked him to marry someone, right? So what happened was, the, from the children of Israel, when they started to get married, God did not parade any woman before any man for marriage. What happened was, God provided guidelines or how they were going to get married, how the marriage, how the marriage institution is supposed to be. God provided guidelines to the children of Israel by telling them, you will not marry from strange lands or strange, or women from other lands. You will marry from within yourself, from within the, the, your, your country, from within the, your nation. So God gave guidelines on, on how and, and how to get married, what exactly you know, you should do, shouldn't do when you are getting married. God provided guidelines, but God never again paraded any woman before a man. He gave them the guidelines, and of course, it was not compulsory or imposed on anyone to follow those guidelines. Because please understand something about God. God does not impose anything on anyone. That is why he gives us free will. Please, if you're just joining us, we're just talking about does God choose who you marry? Please, let's, let's just flow and I'm sure that the Holy Spirit is going to teach us tonight in the name of Jesus. So God never paraded any woman before any man or created, you know, and brought. So God gave guidelines and instructions after that the children of Israel. And we can see that it was not composite because someone like Solomon, he went out and married out of the instructions of God and all of that. God does not impose anything on anyone. He will tell you this is good and it is often it's your free will to choose whether you want to follow what God is saying or what, or what God is not saying. We can also see from Samson, God said they should not marry from the land of the Philistines. But no, Samson in the Bible, he wanted to marry from someone from the land of the Philistines. God did not stop him. God did not send angels to stop him. God used, he got to choose his parents warned him because that's how God instructs us. He sometimes instructs us in dreams through people, through our parents, through our pastors. God sent his children. God instructed the parents to try to, you know, obstruct him getting married from 
going against God's guidelines, but his mind was made up. He also married, and we all know how he ended. And this, we all know how Solomon ended as well. He was a great king. The Bible records so many great things about him. And the Bible also records a lot of evil things about him because of he married a lot of strange women. Going out of the guidelines of God to marry strange women. And we know that the Bible recorded that those women took his heart away from God. They made him go after idols and they made him serve idols. And we can also see from Abraham, Abraham, when he wanted to get a wife for his son Isaac, he obeyed, he followed the guidelines of God. He sent his servant to go back to his people to look for a wife for Isaac and the servant went you know, and the servant, you know, we can also see that the servant seek the help of God. When he went, he said, God, I don't know who I'm going to choose, but any woman that is going to give water, give me water to drink, I'm just going to know that, you know, just that that is your choice for Isaac. And that's exactly when he went. You know, God has a way that he guides us when we ask him to. When we follow instruction, he doesn't leave us. God brought Rebecca. She didn't only give him water. She gave water to his flock and he even later found out that she was from the family you know of Abraham so God gave guidelines and instructions on what to do who to marry who not to marry now I'm sure somebody is asking but this is then in the Old Testament and all of that what about in our day and time what how, how, how does it work out so we're gonna look at our day and time what about now how does it work and does God still choose? How, how does it work? So first of all, I want to make it very clear that God no longer parades or bring any woman to any man. After Eve made the mistake and Adam blamed God and said, God is the woman that you gave that made me to do this. That was the end. God didn't do that again. Instead, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18 verse 22 that he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Almighty God. That he, that is not God that finds a wife for someone now, but he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Almighty God. And I like some version says he that finds a wife finds a treasure and obtains favor from the Almighty God. So it's the responsibility of a man to now find a wife, to now find his treasure. Praise the Lord. So, it is the responsibility to find a man, to find his treasure, to find a wife for himself. But now, someone and then, does that mean that God is not interested in who we get married? That we can just get, get up and, you know, get around and find anyone that we want to get married to? That also is not correct. So, God from Proverbs 22 verse 18, Proverbs 20, 18 verse 22, rather Proverbs 18 22, the man has to find his wife, but God is interested in that. God will not find for him, but God is interested in him finding his wife. So, he is the one that will look for the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. Now, now that tells us many things that it is not okay for people to just sit down and say, oh, I want to get married, but I'm not doing anything about it. I'm not searching for anyone. I'm just sitting down and waiting for God to bring me a wife or a husband. God will allow you to search. You have to search. You cannot just sit down or you cannot just also, a lot of people do this, wait for someone, maybe their pastor or a prophet to come and tell them and prophesy and make a decree. Oh, you're going to marry a sister that is tall and fair, that is plumpy and all of that. Her name is Rebecca. The day you will meet her, she's going to wear a green cloth. She's going to, she's going to make a twisted braid. She's going to make all of that. That is not what the Bible is telling us. The Bible is telling us that the man will have to find his wife. The Bible is not telling us that the pastor will have to find the wife for him because we have situations where people say, my pastor says this is my husband or my wife. Now I cannot say that is wrong or not, but I can only speak what the word of God says. The word of God does not authorize any other person to look for a wife 
for anyone. It is the person that is looking for the wife that have to go searching for it. Yes, people can instruct, people can guide you, but it is your responsibility to look for it. Not any prophet, not any pastor, because I've heard cases where pastors are forcing people to get married or do this, or a prophet, or one teacher, or one whatever is forcing someone. God told me that that person is your husband or your wife. So please, let's get this very correctly. God does not instruct people to come and instruct another person about who they get married to. Except God just wants to play his sovereignty, but that is very rare. We've not, you know, seen it in the Bible except in the case of Uzziah, where God asked him to marry someone. So, is God interested in who we get married to, even if we are the ones searching? Is God interested, involved in this? The truth is yes, God is interested in who we marry. It, because, you know, why is God interested? Because God has the whole plan of your life. God knows who. God knows what. He has everything planned out for you. You know? The Bible says in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, I'm going to read that. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. It says, I'm just going to read for you. Why is God interested in everything about you? God is not just interested in your marriage alone. God is interested in everything that concerns you. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, it, it reads, it says, I knew you before I found you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you aside. So God has like a plan for you. He knows what is included in that plan, including who you will get married to. He knows, he has included everything in his, in his plan. He knows when it's going to happen. He knows how that plan is going to play out. Now, like every other aspect of our lives, whatever God's plan for us, it is always ours to take His perfect will or to reject His will. Like I said from the beginning, God does not impose anything on anyone. If He does, He will, he will be, you know, taking our, our free will from us. God doesn't impose. God can tell you, I keep before you life and death and he always tell you choose but he always tell you choose life that you may live he will not tell you I command you to choose life God does not you know command us does not impose anything on anyone that's why he's giving us free will to always choose whatever we want to choose so God is interested in you he's interested in everything that concerns you including your marriage he is interested in who you get married to but he will not force anything on you Especially if you have a great destiny and a great purpose, God is so much interested because God knows that who you get married to will either help you to accomplish that purpose or fall away from his purpose and his plan. You know, marriage is like a double-edged sword. Marriage can be your greatest blessing. Marriage can be your biggest curse if you didn't get it right. Marriage can bring you the, the greatest happiness in the whole world. Believe me, marriage can also bring you the biggest unhappiness, sadness in the whole world. Marriage can, can be a good attraction. It can also be a big distraction, especially for people that have purpose, that carry purpose, big purpose. People that have the call of God or something upon their life. Believe me, their marriage can either make them or mar them. Marriage can make them pursue that destiny or forget about it. There are many people that are married today. By God's design, they're supposed to be great evangelists. They're supposed to be so many, so much, but they cannot be all of that because of the marriage that they find them themselves the person is not supporting them the person doesn't want them to do all of that the person doesn't want them to be a man of God or all of that so who you get married to is so important God is so interested in that as a, as a child of God God is your father in his is a caring father take our earthly parents for example they're interested in everything that concerns us they want to know from when we were born they take care of us they want to know what we you know they, they guide us from nursery primary school or oh, what you want to be, want to be a doctor, they guide us, they help us to be all that, you know, we want to be and more. They even tell us sometimes, I would like you to do better and all of that. That is how God is to us, to God is our heavenly father. So he's interested in everything that concerns us. He takes our matter, our matter personally. It is important to him who you get married to. Although God gives us free 
will to choose who we get married with, it's very important for you to understand that he's also interested in the subject and he provides us with guidelines just like the time of old. I'm not choosing for you, I'm not doing anything for you, but I know what is best for you, but I'm going to allow you to search it out. I'm going to provide you guidelines. I'm going to put people and, and things in place to help you, to choose, to help you, to do it right. So God provides guidelines for every aspect of our lives and that includes marriage. Doesn't force anything on anyone. So in his word, he says he that find a wife. So it's no longer him bringing. Now let's look at that that particular verse for, for, for a few seconds. He that found a wife. He that found a wife. So he, not God, not the woman now. So it is the responsibility of the man to find a wife. Now ladies, we know a lot of things are going on in the world, but I believe as a child of God, you should know better than to go finding any man. You should know better than to go proposing to any man. It is not, there's no way that you know a lady should propose to a man. It is he that found a wife. So what is your responsibility as a lady? It's not that, oh, I'm just sitting down, I'm just waiting, I'm not going to do anything until somebody come and find me. No, you also be praying for whoever that God have, you know, that is trying to find you, that they will find you, they will discover you. Your responsibility is to, is, you know, is to look good and be discoverable. Go to places, church activity, participate, work in the workforce, in places where you can be found. So it is the responsibility of a man to find a wife. And he says, he that find it, again, he that find it. So it means that that thing already exists. It's not trying to create. It's looking for something that already exists. So he that find it, it means that the wife already exists. So again, we go back to what we said earlier. God has the whole plan. Everything is already worked out by God. So now that it is your, it is the man finding, what does the man need to do? So this is where God comes in. Although the man is finding, the man needs to know where to find it. The puzzle in all of that is he that finds it. So you need to find it. It means that it is available and it is available somewhere. And now as human, you don't know where that thing is available. So you need to go back to God. That's where God comes in. So you need to go back to God and ask him in prayers in supplication lord lead me lord guide me lord instructs me you know when we read that proverbs 18 i'm gonna open that right now because i'd like to read from another translation i love the way that translation puts it and i want us to just read that okay verse 22 of Proverbs 22 and verse 18. The New Living Translation says, Father can give their son an inheritance of houses and wealth, but only the Lord give an understanding wife. So when you start searching for a wife, he that finds it, you should keep this at the back of your mind. It is God that gives an understanding wife. So you need his help. You need his help to be able to find that wife, that woman, he's not finding it for you, but he will help you if you ask him how and where and how to go about finding it. The puzzle is, if someone is looking for something, you need to know where to look. It's a treasure. The Bible says, some, verse, some, some translation says, he that find a wife, find a treasure. So a man finding a treasure, or any other treasure, it needs to have a guide, it needs to have like a road map, a road map, compass, something that would direct him to where the treasure is. So that is where God comes in. God is the one that directs you, that guides you. If you ask him, if you don't, he will, he will not force anything on you, like I said from the beginning. So God instructs you, God guides you, he provides you with the road map, he leads you to where you can find that thing that you are finding, that why, because he that finds it, it is somewhere, it's already in existence. So he provides you with guidelines on how, you know, you're going to find it. And some people have gone about finding on their own, looking at physical things and a lot of things. That's why the Bible wants us, and God has provided us guidelines. The Bible wants
counsels us in Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 7. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your step. So when you start finding, when you go about looking now that we have established that God no longer parades any woman or puts any woman on any man and it is the responsibility of the man to find. And we have also established that the man is in his it by himself will not know because he that find it it means the thing exists so he will need to find it how can you find something that you don't know how it looks like so you need to know what's best for us so that's why it is important that although god is not searching for us we are searching we need to involve god in it and also proverbs 11 14 verse 11 proverbs 14 verse 11 it tells us that there is a way that seems right unto a man but the of it are the ways of destruction the end can destroy him now many people set out to look to choose who to marry on their own they see where everything is fine oh she's a sister in the church she speaks in tongues she she's tall she's fair she's this she's beautiful she's blah 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 even most ladies as well they accept to marry someone because they're just looking at all the things that they can see but marriage is more way more more than that that is why you cannot depend on what you see that is why the way that seems right unto you may not benefit you may not be the best that is why you need God to be able to help you out many people set out to find out who they are going to get married with physical eyes only so tonight God is interested God wants to help you but you need to take his help like every other thing about our life remember the Bible says either ask shall receive you receive be not because you ask not so we need to ask his help as we go about choosing who to marry if you're just joining us we've been looking at does God choose does God choose who you marry? Does God force someone on you to get married to? And we have established that God does not choose who we get married to. God knows what is best for us. God has a plan for us. God knows who and what and when. But it's the responsibility of the man to search. But not to search by himself. To search relying on the help of God. Who already knows whatever. Who already knows everything. And we have also established that God has given us free will. God does not force anything on us that's why we have the perfect will of God for those people that really you know really are earnestly designed the help of God and praying earnestly and allowing God to lead them they follow his perfect will there's also the permissive will of God for those people that think oh I know better I can choose and I can do all of that again God will not force anything on anyone so that's why we have the perfect will and the and the permissive will of God now it's also very important that when someone sets out to find a wife, a man sets out to find a wife, it's very important that he knows, you know, he has a, a little bit of, you know, criteria of what he's looking out for. I believe I can say this, that God does not give us things that are, you know, below our expectations. God always surpasses our expectations. So, to set out to look for someone, because many people set out to look for who they want to get married, but they don't really have anything in place, any criteria. They don't know what they want. They don't know what they are looking for. When you pray, God gives you your heart desire, and God surpasses your expectations and your desires. So it's important. I'm going to marry a believer. She's going to be this or that or that. All your criteria may not fall in place with the will of God, but God will surpass it. God does not always give us below what we cry out to him for. So it's very important that before you search out money, you have a little bit of criteria of what you want and present it to God. Father, this is what I want, but it's very important that we always say, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done because it's not about what we want or our will and all of that. God's will and God's plan is always the best and God always surpass our expectations so now we have established all this we want to look at so God does not choose God does not force anything on anyone God does not parade any woman before anyone like he did with Adam but God has provided provided basic guidelines and where are these guidelines these guidelines are in his word 
these guidelines are supposed to help us make it easy for us to choose who we get married to so it's not such a difficult task it's like i have given you the, the power to do this but i've also given you the steps that you must take and some some guidelines that you must follow to you know narrow your search so that you don't go searching in the whole wide world and one, one of those guidelines is marry from the family i put it that way marry from the family the bible says in second corinthians 6 verse 14 to 17 i'd like us to 